They're up. Good start. Cesario and Singalese from their outside post show speed. That's what I mean. And Isla Cozine close up. Memorets at the rail. Three degrees is mid pack alongside Hallowed Dream to the outside Silken Scarlet and Silver Cup. Lewis Line has to check briefly off horses. Melor Ainda is second to last early, and the trailer is Sweet Firebird. It is Isla Cozine to take charge as they hook up with the main course, and Isla Cozine is now three lengths in front of That's What I Mean in second. Cesario is well placed for Japan. She is third and only in the two path from the 12 hole as they race at the clubhouse turn. A length and a half to Memoret who is fourth and on the front end Isla Cozine's trying to win the American Oaks right here and now. She's five lengths in front. Single ease, Hallow Dream and Silken Scarlet are next. They're all about nine from the front. Three degrees Melor Ayinda three wide to the back stretch and Lewis Line all 11 lengths from the front. Silver Cup is already pushed along 13 from the lead and if Sweet Firebird wins the fourth American Oaks. She'll make up 15 lengths in four and a half furlongs. Isla Cozine tries to slow it down to the half mile pole, but that's what I mean and Cesario will have none of that and that's what I mean has taken over the lead. That's all for Isla Cozine. She drops back and loses second to Cesario who is in perfect striking position. Now just a neck from the front. Single ease and Memoret. Lewis Line has passed several. Here's Lewis Line up into fourth. A length and a half to Melora Ayinda who's got a long way to come and Cesario Cesario takes charge at the top of the stretch, and Cesario has opened up a big lead. She is four lengths in front of single ease in second. Then comes, that's what I mean, Melora Yinda is eight lengths from the Japanese superstar, Cesario. Cesario past mid stretch. She's running them off their feet. Five lengths in front of single ease. Melora Yinda might get into second, but no way does she catch the winner, Cesario. Cesario wins the fourth American Oaks. Melora Yinda solidly defeated in second. Single ease third and three degrees. Finish fourth. Domo Arigato Cesario takes the fourth running of the American Oaks. And for the first time since 1959, a Japanese horse comes to the United States and wins a stakes race. And not just any stakes race, the grade one American Oaks. This kid's given this filly a great ride from the outside post position, used her a little bit early on, got her in the perfect spot. She came off that effort going a mile and a half, so you had to know that stamina wasn't going to be come into uh, question. Took over the lead early, and he took over the lead with a ton of horse. But what about Malore in there? I mean, while well, you can't say that she's unlucky not to, to win, I mean, she does have a terrible trip. She has a terrible trip. She managed to rally second, but let's not take anything away from Cesaria. I want to touch on Yuji oh, Fukunaga for a second. The rider, what a great ride. This filly usually comes from off the pace. She was keen going to post. She was keen in the first turn. He got it perfectly positioned in third. Here's a guy whose father was one of the best riders in Japan in the early 70s. Nearly lost his life in a fatal spill, was paralyzed. They were questioning whether Dang Yuchi would go into the racing business. He does. He's one of the up-and-coming stars. And this is a great ride by him. Well, great how ride. good was Cesario today? I'd like to be riding her. She shattered the stakes record. The final time, 159. The previous fast, 159. 59 and 4. So by nearly a second, she's faster than any of the previous three winners. Here's a look at how she did it. Frank, this goes what to what yeah. you said. We said during the running of the race, maybe she hit the front too soon, but he had no option. No she was option. going so much better than the rest of the field. She drug him to the lead. She was just running off away from them, and she's very unlucky uh, not to have a, a perfect career when she was second in the Japanese Guineas. Uh, they said she was very unlucky that day. He beat day. her that day. Yeah, he, he was aboard the horse that beat her that day. I tell you, I don't think he's ever going going to take off this one again. This uh, filly is very, very special. Uh, you know, you kind of have to say a little something about our grand sire. Sunday Silence. Uh, what a uh, terrific racehorse and sire he it's turned out to be. a huge story in Japan. There's a large press corps that has come all the way over from Japan. They had a one-hour morning show over in Japan centered around this race. This is huge news, especially when you consider the history of American racing and Japanese racing and the fact that so few Japanese 
Japanese horses have come over here and been successful than to win a race like that. That guy was sitting on our stage and nearly took it down. He was yeah. cheering so hard as they turned for home. I think he's the groom. He was standing about three feet for us. And don't forget, Dance in the Mood, second last year with a rough trip. All week long, the Japanese contingent have been telling us here that this filly was much better than Dance in the Mood. And she demolished this field. She won by about four lengths. The track record time you spoke about, Todd, and a great price, five to two in the morning line, drifted up to five to one when the gates opened. Hey guys, uh, you know, uh, like our, our, our network is about wagering, and let's give her a little We're clap right there. Right. Absolutely, this is fantastic. I mean, this is a rare sight for American fans to see one of the best Japanese jockeys and the best three-year-old filly in Japan, and look at this the Japanese so press just crowd to see her, but Americans have to appreciate this because it's a rare sight. It hasn't happened in 50 years. It might not happen for another 50 years, but maybe but you know Cesaro what? will lead the way. And that's what I'm going to say. Uh, you know, with this filly coming over here and doing this, this just shows them that they can do it. It's not about the, the purse money. 750000 over there is is basically, a, you know, it's nothing. She could have run in richer races now. It's oh, an allowance much. race. It's seven, a, seven, they run from maiden purses, we'll say, and then want to race 100000 This is a statement they've been the trying to make. statement, exactly. It's an international statement about the importance of this race and about how the Japanese industry want to make an impact on U.S. racing. There's been five runnings of this race. They've run second, and they've won it now, Todd. So much has been made of the quiet solitude found here on weekdays at Hollywood Park in the grandstand. This day throws it all in their face because you have a huge crowd on hand on the track apron. They've gathered around this winter circle area, literally 13 deep. They're enthusiastic to greet this rare sight, Cesario. And as the track announcer, Vic Stoffer, mentions her name, applause comes up yet again. Cesario, one of the most worthy champions we have seen in the American Oaks. A dominating performance here over a good horse, a great horse, and Mel Orienda. She just showed how much better she was. Now, Mel Orienda did a little bit of a tough trip. Uh, you never say that she would ever have beaten this filly uh, with, uh, with uh, a perfect trip. Uh, this is a, like you say, great statement for uh, people around the world to uh, to be able to come here, win a race like this, because it's for the prestige. The That's American right. Oaks, God bless Martin Panzer for coming up with this idea, because California needs something to boost the racing. This is what it is right here, and hopefully we're going to boost the purse and get the very best from around the world to appear here uh, in July of every year. Now, I'll tell you, just physically, she was imposing all week. Yep. We wondered about after the way she warmed up, but when you see her physically, she towers over her rivals. Well, when you put it next to Mel Orander, it looks like mother and daughter. Right. I mean, yeah. it's two different two yeah. different animals. You put together the ride. I keep harking on that, the ride by Yuchi Fukunaga. I thought it was a tremendous ride. This guy's got no experience about riding the tight turns here in North America. He had this fully tucked in third, going into the first turn. Tremendous performance by him. Great training job. And there she is right there. I, I, you know what I love to uh, point out about her? You see, uh, like, uh, her hawks in behind. See the way they kind of sit out a little bit from her hind end? That is Sunday silence all over. The reason Sunday silence, no one really ever wanted to buy him, was because of his confirmation. He really didn't have the best of confirmation. He kind of passed that on down through to his offspring, but one of the greatest sires of all time, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, I believe his offspring had made something over like $450 million uh, and uh, still going. There's a beautiful Beautiful trophy to take back to TVG. Japan. I'm so proud of these people. This is great for them. TVG was the first network to bring you racing from Japan.